Hi, and welcome to our next episode of From Inside. <clears throat> For those of you who have not been with us before, uh, typically we have one of our consultants or two of our consultants with whom we have a dialogue. But tonight we have a special guest, as you can see, and um, we're going to talk to you about roles on and off the stage. And this is not a prepared talk, this is a dialogue where Laura and I will be sharing our perspectives and our experiences um, in dealing with the roles that we're called upon to play in life. Uh, it is the way we enter the world stage, the way we enter our lives is through the roles that we initially take on and then we start to play with when we get the idea down and ultimately looking to be able to create the roles. It's still appropriate to the situation and context you're in, but now it's filled with more of your own creativity and, and your own sense of calling and purpose and why you're here in this world. So talking about roles, Laura is my daughter. She's an actress. She's a mother. She's a daughter to my wife as well, a granddaughter, cousin, aunt. I'm a wife. <laughs> and a wife. Let's not forget that one. I was going to save that the best for last. Okay. And um, now during this period, with all of us finding the routines are out of whack, they're, they're in transformation into a new form, certainly our encouragement has always been to take advantage of this time to really help transform, change the form of your life through the various roles that you play. And Laura will probably share some of what she's done uh, during this period. And it's much nicer to listen and look at my daughter than I, so I will sit back and let her begin to take this where it will go. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Um, and I am excited to be here. It's funny because initially my dad was like, so we'll be in different rooms <laughs> on computers talking to each other. And I was like, I would prefer to sit in the same room with you. And I will say, this is actually the most time we have spent together in the four months we have lived here. My exactly. family came here on Friday the 13th of March and with two weeks worth of clothing and we have not left. Right. Um, and my mom and my dad have been so generous with their home, with their time. We have shared um, the, the caretaking of my daughter who's three and a half and, and it's gone. I think considering all things considered like very seamlessly. Mm -hmm. I know my husband, Patrick and I feel very welcomed here. I know my daughter is loving it. You know, I think it's rare for grandparents to say, I will be with your child for like two, sometimes three hours a day and not my mom and dad together separately so that my husband can work and that I can work. Um, but in doing so, it's like we're taking shifts and we're almost never actually together. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the few times that like, um, situations have arisen or feathers have been ruffled. It's because we've actually not been in community or dialogue. Mm -hmm. We're just sort of like high-fiving as right. we pass, we're like passing right. the baton. Right. So I've actually been really looking forward to this time right. simply <laughs> to be with you <laughs> and to hang out with you because we just, by the end of the day, my daughter right. has run us ragged and at 8.30, everyone's like, good night. <clears throat> And, you know, I, I said to Laura a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago, time oh, no, is just there's so no way to right know. now. That, what is um, time? I said, it's like you're still in high school here. You're running through the hallways. You're in this project. Get this thing going. You know, it's a new show. This is what these kids did in righteousness. And, you know, there, there's certain qualities of energy that we all have. And um, as we've seen, any parent has seen with their children, it's getting that energy into the right forms. Mm -hmm. And now the rest of her life, well, her life thus far has been continually working to get to that point of role creation, Le meeting people, learning about the industry that she's in, uh, the, the co-facilitators uh, that help stage a Broadway show or something on TV, um, and, and the personalities involved, you know, people that are open-hearted and people who pretend to be open-hearted, mm -hmm. which is like all of us have to deal with in the world. You know, learning to be able to be in a role, which always involves another person, and being able to be in that role in a way that you don't lose your integrity, that the other does not disintegrate you, and yet you're not in a constant battle, 
but you're able to find graceful ways to continue to evolve who you are as a human being, which, as you know, I think you've done superbly in Thanks your so. life. Really. It's interesting to be in the home in which I was formed. Hmm. You know, so this is this is our childhood, my childhood hmm. home, our family home. And this is the space where I sort of became who I am. <laughs> and during the course of the, you know, 16 years that I lived here, I tried on a lot of different roles. You know, I was like, I'm going to be an organic farmer. I'm a punk rock. I'm, you know, whatever, all of the different things that I tried on. And then I left here when I was 18, which is so young to go into the world and live on your own. And I became a professional actor at 18 and, and never stopped. And so from 18 to 41, which I just turned, it's been decades of like trying on different mm -hmm. roles, both in my profession, mm -hmm. but also in the world, because there are things people tell us to be as a woman, there are qualities that I'm told um, to possess, you know, infinite patience, always interested, um, you know, happy to see someone like you know, happy and jovial, laughing mm -hmm. off something that might make me uncomfortable, all, mm -hmm. the, all of those roles that are, are given to us. Um, but it's interesting, too, that I would say over the last, like, 12 years through a mindfulness and meditation mm -hmm. practice, through just coming into to my own self, I've taken away a lot of, like, the masks, as mm -hmm. it were, a lot of the mm -hmm. roles that I placed on myself for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Mm -hmm. And being back in my childhood home now with my husband and my daughter um, as a grown up, the first like six weeks we were here, I was like, what? <laughs> the, what is going on? I, could, I felt the same sort of angsty, like Alanis right. Morissette right. rage right. that I felt as a teenager. Like everything you did annoyed me. I, I, it was a very confusing yeah. thing. Yeah. And so we have now over yeah. the course of the past few months figured out our roles within exactly. this yeah. like cult. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, it's like one, one day I was in the bathroom and Laura came in and with Ella and I said, you know, one of my dreams had always been that we'd have like this family compound where we're going to be living together. But I didn't think we'd wind up being like a commune. That everybody's running naked through the rooms. And we are not running naked through, through the rooms. Baby. And also, <laughs> when I say back, when he's in his bathroom, he does not mean toilet. He was at a sink. There we go. Thank, Thank you. you. So I, I need okay. you to class things up here. There you go. But as you said, you know, that uh, roles that we are given, roles that we take. And as we see with Ella, that's how we learn. Ella's, Ella's my daughter. Constantly, yes, trying on different roles yeah. constantly. She wants to play both sides of the roles. And it's natural in our brain development, in our personality development, in our ability to be social animals that we're designed to be, to try on these different roles, if you will, these different costumes, if you will. And that is the taking on of role. When you're told you're, you're the smart one, you're the athletic one, you're the this one, you're that one, we, we take it on. But when we grow from the inside out, when we grow, what we're doing is we're growing up into the forms that we're taking, typically begun by role taking. It's given to, we take it. And then we start to maybe need a little wiggle room. So we begin to find a way to play with it a little bit. What, what, can, what still works here within the parameters of uh, appropriateness and ethics and morality. And then the next level is role creation. When you've got it down, you know what's appropriate, what's gonna be accepted, what's not. And you bring your creative juices into it and you begin to do things in a way that is a little bit different, hope, and certainly a little bit better. Whenever we're talking about growth, we're talking about the best of you growing up into the outer part of you, not, not growing the, the, the worst parts of any of us. So I think about often the roles you've played, the different characters you've played. And I know from my own limited experience with a sort of improvisational kind of acting, that um, for me, it was very powerful to go into roles that I would never really play in real life and to get the feel of what was resonating or not resonating with that, which kind of was part of my own 
deeper understanding of what it means to be role creating. But of course, as we say here, and what's reflected in the world's wisdom tradition, traditions, as well as social psychology, that while you alone must continually become your best self, continually transforming those roles, you, you cannot do it alone. Because if you have someone on the other side receiving all this great stuff, it calls it forth. You have someone on the other side pushing it down, denying it, uh, jealous of it, playing games with it. You're in that conflict. And we grow up in that tension and conflict of the, the many layers of, of who and what people are. To be able to come to your own center, mindfulness, yoga, whatever brings you to that place. And from that place, being able to perceive more deeply, what's going on here? Am I being, are my spirits being lifted? Or, or is something pressing down? And is it something pressing down, building up energy, I now need to come up against it? Or is this something that I need to just kind of step away? And, and... It's interesting because in acting, you know, people often say you're only as good as the person you're playing opposite. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a scene with an actor who is not believable, you are that is reflected onto you and you are less believable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so there are times where you can change that, where maybe, you know, everyone sees it's not working and then they bring in a different actor. And there are other times where it's like, this is who you're going to be acting with. Mm -hmm. This person is not going mm -hmm. away. So you have to figure out mm -hmm. what tools to use to effectively yes. and truthfully portray your character. Yes. Um, and so I, that is actually something that's a, a, a tool that I've mm -hmm. had to develop in life. Like, yes. so there are people who are just going to be here. They, they're not going anywhere. And mm -hmm. so you have to sort of learn how to maintain your own integrity mm -hmm. within that relationship mm -hmm. and, and boundaries, which, you know, I think I, I'm not to speak for all women, but that is something that was always challenging for me boundaries. Mm -hmm. I'm still working on that. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, I learned how to do that in my profession before I was able to do it personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that's an interesting sort of, um, I don't know, metaphor as a mm -hmm. word. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've often mentioned how, um, I think it was maybe in the last, uh, webcast that we did about, um, awareness, acceptance, and adjustment that mm. to, to be aware, okay, here's what's going on within me and around me. I'm aware. And then accepting, like you said, this isn't going to go away. Mm -hmm. So, now it can get to the third A, the adjustment, awareness, acceptance, adjustment. And adjustment mm -hmm. doesn't mean complying. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean going along with something that you think is wrong. It means that in, in your acceptance, you're now doing whatever you can to maintain integrity, maybe even help or heal or serve the other person mm -hmm. or, or to keep others from being in harm's way. But awareness is something we, we get dulled from, we get mm -hmm. distracted from. We wind up... Uh, having role exhaustion because we're in just one role all the time or uh, 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 exhausted in the other direction. There's too many roles. They're, can, they're banging into each other. There's not enough time to rest and have the, the rest tip that, that we need to be able to transition from one role into another role. Mm -hmm. And it's a constant lifelong challenge, which as we become more skilled and we become more aware and, and more accepting, we, we can adjust more gracefully. Through, through the problems and situations that we have. Mm -hmm. All of this is easier said than done. Totally. But as we practice, eventually become more like a martial artist where we're just sort of flying through the air dealing with this stuff and not being so uh, bitter or resentful or angry. You just realize, yeah, that's, what's the next thing? Okay, now what's the next thing? Now how can I serve here? All easier said than done. That's where the serenity prayer, I find that mm -hmm. to be so beautiful. You know, God grant me the ability to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Right. I mean, to me, that is just so perfectly yeah. stated. Yeah. Because I, I have spent in my life so much wasted time banging my head against something that was never going to change, you know, as opposed to accepting that it's not going to change mm -hmm. and making peace with it, or the opposite, where I had the power to change something but I was too afraid, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So the courage mm -hmm. to change the things I can. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is really challenging to know what is within our power and mm -hmm. what is not. Mm -hmm. 
um, yeah. And, and in terms of what is within our power, you know, uh, what is within our power to influence here? I can't do anything about that. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's, maybe I could, oh, there's always something I could do. I could, I could pray some good energy, wh mm -hmm. whatever your belief system holds to get across some good, healthy, whole healing energy. Mm -hmm. But there are other situations where you can step in and really be of good influence. Mm -hmm. But to be able to discern, we, we need to be able to continually do the work that brings us to that, that still strong, courageous, truthful, intuitive center. Mm -hmm. Now, we live at a very <laughs> unusual time in our lives. Some of the basic things that feed our heart and soul, like community, connection, touching, feeling, being with people, now is even more, it's interesting, in many ways it seems to be at, the, 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 uh, metaphorically, the distance of what people have been getting used to for many years mm. with, with, with superficial manners and, 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 and role play between the two to kind of keep things. And then there's mm. a whole subtext underneath. And hopefully we're getting to a place of recognizing that there's a better way to be truthful, to, to, be, to be still enough to be able to be open and aware and, and to accept, accept what you're feeling, thinking, doing, accept it except what you see going on around you. And then from that inner place of wisdom, which means like the overview, you're able to see the whole thing or more of the whole thing, you never see it all. But you're able to, from that position, make the adjustments that you see being called for, knowing you're not always going to succeed, but to have your hope and your strength and your courage continue to build. Mm -hmm. So I wonder with your experience over the years, um, out in the big world, and... Um, and, and I truly mean that, the bigger world than the town you grew up in. Mm -hmm. um, what, what have you learned about the world? Hmm. What have I learned about the world? Oof, that's such a big question. Mm -hmm. I've learned... I've learned... I think the biggest thing I've learned about the world is that it's like it's not scary and it's not out to get me mm -hmm. that most situations that I find myself in people are for the most part rooting for me, mm -hmm. either rooting for me because it will make their life easier or rooting for me because they genuinely want me to, mm -hmm. to succeed or frankly, not thinking about me at all. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that, mm -hmm. that as a, as a young person, I, had this sort of self-conscious narcissism where I just assumed that everyone was thinking about me all the time mm -hmm. and they were probably mad at me. Mm -hmm. um, so as I've gotten older and as I've dedicated my life more to being of service to other people, I've sort of accepted that everybody is the star of their own movie. Mm -hmm. And so everyone is seeing the world through their own particular lens mm -hmm in which they are the star. Mm -hmm. And so they may, I might be the villain in their movie, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean I'm a villain. Right. I might be the object of their desire in mm -hmm. their movie, but that doesn't mean I have to acquiesce to that desire. Right. Right. I might be the most talented person in the world to them, but that mm -hmm. doesn't mean I'm the most talented person mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Or that might mean they think I'm garbage and that mm -hmm. doesn't mean I'm garbage. Right. So it's like, for me, it's knowing like the world in general is not out to get me. I do think the world in general is more accepting than we give it credit for. Mm -hmm. And that if I push through the momentary fear of not being accepted or loved or seen for who I really am, if I can move through it with grace and the intention to be of service to someone else, it mm -hmm. almost always turns out well mm -hmm. and if it doesn't at least i am proud of mm -hmm. my own self and how i have behaved in that mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. when i when i go get off of my center and when i'm doing things in order for someone to like me in order for someone to praise me in order for someone mm -hmm. to say look at what a good person she is mm -hmm. when my intention is off balance mm -hmm. even if the outcome is they do think mm -hmm. those things about me mm -hmm. i don't feel good about mm -hmm. me Beautifully said. And so that's the thing I think I've learned the most. So beautifully said. Then the, the last words, I don't feel good about me. The, the, the inner eye, that center 
I hesitate to say center point because it's more, really more like a zone. Mm. You know, from the inside, how do I, from my heart and soul, feel about me mm-hmm. in, in this particular role, which is involving this particular relationship and this context? You know, but how can I bring my essence into form? Mm-hmm. And what I've always loved about the notion of dialogue is that dialogue is about synthesis. Mm-hmm. What, what between the two? And, you know, that's really where we come alive. Mm-hmm. We, come, we, become, we come alive in true relationship, where there's the thesis and the antithesis, say, and you don't have a debate for one to win and lose, but you have the thesis, antithesis. And what's the synthesis? What's mm-hmm. our common ground? Right. What is our common ground? And for people to move in that direction, we need to continually do that for our own physical, mental, and emotional health as well as our interpersonal health. And it's on a global scale what the world needs to do, mm-hmm. to come toward the golden rule, mm-hmm. do unto others. You know, in some spiritual traditions, they say there really is no other. There is no other. Mm-hmm. But that's when you're down at your, in your heart and soul, no, in, in the deepest connecting, loving, communal relationships you feel with a person, you don't know where you begin and they end. And we can't live on that level. We have to be out here in the world and do our stuff. And to bring that essence into form is, in my own experience in life, that's, that's what my own life journey has been. From the time I was a kid where I was brought up and, and the kinds of things I was told about me that I had no contrast to, so I sort of took on. But there was always something inside of me that I kind of liked better than what was on the outside. Mm. And then through the various stages of my own life, beginning to understand, well, that's a good thing, that there's, th- there's things I, I don't like about me, <clears throat> um, things that I find ineffective about me, things I find go along with everyone else, but I don't like what we're doing kind of thing. And, and finding that I could have some influence on the form and the roles that I take on the stage of life, if you will. Mm. And being never able to do it perfectly and continuing to fall short of my ideals. But to me, that's fine because that's what ideals are for. They're the North star you never hit, but you keep moving, moving in that direction until maybe you become a star. And I'm sure there's some people who think, wow, you've got the award. You've done this. You've done that. Your life is a piece of cake now. (laughs) And you know what? There are some ways in which my life is a lot easier. You know, I, I think that, there is a certain amount of like gift to my life mm-hmm. because I realized my lifelong dream when I was 18 years old and granted I've worked really hard and I've mm-hmm. definitely come up against obstacles mm-hmm. and I've had difficult times, but for the most part, for a person who's chosen this profession, I've mm-hmm. been extremely blessed mm-hmm. and not to say that I don't work hard or that, you know, I, I, I'm prepared and I, mm-hmm. um, And I think more so, even as Mm -hmm. I've gotten older, I have a deeper Mm -hmm. appreciation for how lucky I am. And so I work even Mm -hmm. harder. But if I could jump in, I think the blessing comes from the fact that you've been so courageous. Thank you. You've been so courageous. I mean, generally, people are starting off in a career to grab anything they can get. And the war from the beginning was always discerning what messages is putting out. Is this really something I want to do? And then, of course, sometimes you get into something and then they twist it around a little bit. It's not exactly Thought. Yeah, that certainly has happened. Right. But I, I will say that, <clears throat> that my ability to do that came from how I was raised. You know, if I had been raised in a home where I was taught not to value myself, I would just blow whichever the way the wind sent me. Right. But because I was brought up in a home of dialogue and I was brought up in a home of, you know, mindfulness and, mm-hmm. and conversation and talking sticks and mm-hmm. spirituality and I knew that I was more than just the thing that I did. And so that was another gift I was given. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I did not earn my place in this Mm -hmm. family. I was Mm -hmm. put here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very aware of that privilege. And I do think those of us who have been born into a position of privilege, whatever that means, have it. I feel an obligation Mm -hmm. to reach towards people who through no, Mm -hmm. you know, 
fault of their, I don't even want to use the word fault, mm-hmm. but you know, it was not their option to mm-hmm. be born where they mm-hmm. were born. I do think there's <clears> our <throat> obligation to reach mm-hmm. our hand and, and say, let me be of service. Mm-hmm. Let me be of help to you because I appreciate what you said, but to put it back, to mm-hmm. put the compliment back in your house, literally, mm-hmm. um, I think that so much of that has to do with how I was raised by you and mom. Mm-hmm. Well, I think both your mom and I have, have known the experience of, of, of becoming. Yeah. Maybe, you know, becoming. Um, and it takes work, but it, like I said before, it does get easier. And you know at some point that you're never going to be perfect, so that makes it easier too. And um, for me, it's been a matter of, become, of becoming more discerning of what, what what is the effect of this person on me? What is mm-hmm. the effect that I have on this person? You know, a good relationship to people are bringing the best out in each other. A bad relationship to bringing the worst out in each other. And being able to be aware of and, and accept the realities of a given situation. And again, no situation is 100% perfect. Mm-hmm. But is there enough good here to kind of keep going for? Mm-hmm. It's very much in, in working with clients that we do at the center. It's inside of you. That's where that center point is, that place inside of us that is not really a point. It's not even a zone. It's this, this spaciousness, this area of consciousness, if you will, that when you're tapping into that, you see more clearly, you feel more deeply, you're more wise, you're more intuitive. And, and you find the courage because you find there's not really any option. It's just this is what's being called for here. You know, the hero's journey. This is what's being called for in this moment. And hopefully you have the background and training that enables you to be strong enough in that moment to handle it. Mm. Of all the roles you've played, and this might be a hard one, but of the roles that you've played in your career, is there one that has come closest to tapping into the, the spirit that you feel within you at this point? Hmm. Um, I actually, I, you know, I, huh. I'm sorry, this is taking me so long. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, there are roles that I felt more connected to than others. You know, mm-hmm. I certainly felt connected to Eliza and mm-hmm. my fair lady. I certainly felt connected to Louise and Gypsy, but, mm-hmm. but those transformation they're mm-hmm. they're they're transformations yes. you know transforming from from someone who is you know well eliza wasn't meek but transforming from someone who's not treated well right into someone who right. values themselves right. so as um, we were saying before someone who brought themselves in, yeah. into a new role new form yeah more creative in, in the way that they were going to be in the world yeah and for me it was less outer circumstances that, that were not treating me well. And more, it was like my own self, right. you know, um, mm-hmm. where I feel like as a young person, I got in my own way a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was learning how not to um, mm-hmm. be the villain of my own story, exactly. you know, and to be my own hero, because, you know, I think my generation of young of, of women that was like sort of the last phase of like damsels. Mm -hmm. You know, when I look back at the cartoons I watched versus what my daughter, what Ella watches, the, the, the girls and women are so much more empowered. Now Mm -hmm. there was still this sense of like, you need a, um, like a white knight to save you. And so I, I think that I, um, took that on a little bit. So I've like learned how to be my own mm-hmm. white knight. So I, so I think in those mm-hmm. ways, those two roles definitely yes. were. So that's been saying 25 minutes. Yeah, no, that's, that doesn't work. So we're on this. Okay. Well, we so are, how are we doing on time? We'll, we'll be finished up the next five minutes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make sure. Sure. And so what, what you spoke to is a real important point. The fact that we, we talk about these outer impositions upon us, mm-hmm. which in psychological parlance called introjection. It's like if you're hearing continually something, either from, from your environment, could be people in that environment, could be on TV or magazines, but if mm-hmm. you're hearing something, something over and over, it becomes introjected, almost like a, um, 
what do they call it, a brain worm or something when you're listening to music? An earworm. An earworm. You can't get it. It's in there. And it's like the Greek chorus behind you saying mm-hmm. you can't or you shouldn't or you're not good enough. And so some piece of what we've picked up from the outside, it may not have been the majority of what we heard. You know, you may have heard you're wonderful, you're wonderful, and one person says you're the most horrible person on the planet. Mm-hmm. And they said at a right moment that, boy, that got mm-hmm. you. And now that's always kind of rolling around in your head. Mm-hmm. To be able to you know, in philosophy, via negativa, get rid of that stuff, mm-hmm. or via positiva, build up the one that's aware of it and accepting of it, and is able to make adjustments in spite of it, if you will. And the more that that inner self grows into its form, the more those things go out to the periphery and kind of get brought down. Mm-hmm. So as we come to the end of our time, my sweet daughter, <laughs> um, anything else you would like to say to sort of round this out for people who might be listening? You know what, I've been thinking a lot and like meditating and praying a lot on why we've all been sent to our rooms. It feels like we've been put in sort of a, a time out. And I've been asking why. Um, and I don't want to impose upon anyone else what the reason is. I, I feel like I know what it is for me. But I just, I encourage everyone to sort of, if you can, be in that space as much as possible. Because when I was fighting it and scared and angry and worried and when, when, what's going to happen to all these jobs and what can I do and who can I save and how can I help and um, all of that, I really got spun off my access and then I was not of help to anyone and myself included. So I do think we are in a moment where, and I'm not saying like bake bread and learn to speak Spanish. Like, I think there's a lot of that that's happening where I think we need to stop saying that to each other and just get as quiet as we can. And whatever your belief system may be, just to say, why are we here? Yes. What are we doing here? What do I need to learn? Mm-hmm. And then we have the time and the space to yeah. wait for the resonant answer. Yeah. Cause there may be many. Yeah. That's and, and, and that's why in, in, again, many of the world's wisdom traditions and, philosophies and spiritual practices, the notion of becoming overly attached Mm. to things uh, as opposed to holding everything loosely, Mm -hmm. everything, Mm -hmm. everything is shifting, changing. And right now we are in a position that we never thought we'd be within our own lifetimes for most Mm -hmm. people and to be able to be aware and then accepting. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm not going to just distract myself all the time from this, but I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be here now and take a look at, what is within my sphere of influence to do a little better? Do I have a, a high stage and big pa- platform, greater sphere of influence? Do, do, am I in a position where the best I could do is write a $5 check every week? Mm. Whatever it is that you can do, that if we all did everything that we could do to our fullest capacity within our sphere of influence, no matter if it means six people or six million people, that the world would change. Mm-hmm. Not in an instant gradually because we are changing what all that hasn't worked is now falling apart and we have to be the ones to bring something better into globally the world and personally our own little section of the world Mm -hmm. it's so funny you said be here now that's been my mantra Mm -hmm. when i find myself working and feeling guilty i'm working and not with my daughter Mm -hmm. i say be here now be here now and vice versa right it's some it's the it's the three words that Mm -hmm. i've been saying to myself Mm -hmm. over and over again Mm -hmm. and it's the absolute hardest Mm -hmm. thing to do and certainly the most important especially at this point when our systems are a little out of whack from that normal position where we might have been a little more able Mm -hmm. to to come to that stillness that that presence um so do your best good luck out there Mm -hmm. Uh, know that um as always we have a great appreciation for the work of kevin kevin simonson who has been behind the scenes getting us set up and doing all the technology that i know nothing about (laughs) so hopefully we'll see you next week if this has been of help to you please share it with your friends and be safe And once again, thank you to all those up at the front lines. Mm -hmm. Be well. Be safe. Stay healthy. Bye. See see you in the bathroom. See you in the bathroom. (laughs)